Hey guys, good afternoon. So today I'm going to go over the items inside of my Art Snacks lettering box. If you're interested, you can see the unboxing video as well. Um, just check out my Art Snacks versus Sketchbox challenge. And I also transferred a lot of the supplies they sent me to this pencil roll I already had to make it more convenient for myself. So, um, uh, these are gonna be hard to get out. There we go. The Art Snacks lettering pack basically sent me two things to letter on, two papers to letter on, um, a set of pins, an eraser, um, a drafting pencil, some spare leads, and some coloring instruments, as well as a pencil sharpener. And I wanted to wait until I was on air to get that unboxed for you guys. And this thing, which is a rotary um, lead pointer for drafting pencils. I thought that twists off, but I guess not. I wonder how you get the shavings out of these things. So today is the day we do demonstrations and we talk actual prices. So, the Cache Bristol, which is right here, and it's actually pretty difficult to find in in-person stores because it's set to come out in April. It's $12.99 at Alabama Art Supply, and that was the only place I could find it. Now, Art Snacks said, gave the value for this at $9.99 retail, so their price is actually a little lower than what the online price was. Now, for the bleed proof extra fine tracing paper, it was $7 on B paper, whereas um, they gave us a $7 quote. So they're on track right there. The Kohenor Adapto lead holder, which is this right here, and I actually have another one of these. I'll grab it in a second. That is $13.09 on Dick Blick, whereas uh, Art Snacks said it was $18.75 retail, so that's pretty. That's a pretty high estimate. Um, the Duet lead refills are $2.99 on Dick Blick, and there are only two lead refills in this. And they said that that would be $4.75 retail, so they're high on that as well. The Alvin Rotary lead pointer is $8.29, again on Dick Blick. And they claim that that would be 1075 retail, so they're still running high. Um, the Factus BM2 eraser pin was 249 at Cheap Joe's, and they claim that that would be um, 895 retail, which is really high for these sort of um, fairly common eraser eraser pins. I think they're called like a knock type eraser. Um, the Pigma, Pigma Micron pins were $7.99 with Prime shipping, so that's free shipping if you have a Prime account, on Amazon. And they said it was $17.39 retail, so that's really high. Um, and the Tombow Dual Brush pins were $10.69 on Amazon, plus $7.96 shipping. And that was the cheapest price I could find on Amazon. Um, I know that you can find these sets in stores, though, and they are at a variety of price points. Um, I'm pretty sure my Jerry's Artorama has them. Um, and they're a staff favorite, and they quoted $16.99 retail. And I also get two free months of Skillshare Premium Membership, which is a $20 value. And I'm not going to be able to get to that until April because... Um, because March is super hectic for me. I have a lot of shows. So um, everything together, minus the $20 Skillshare value, was $65.53 for the physical supplies um, by the prices that I could find online. Now, I paid $80 for my lettering box. And if you include the $20 value, that's an $85 value. But um, uh, they claim a retail value over $110, and it's not. It's about $85, so they're really short when it comes to their retail value. So, now it's time to start demonstrating these for you. And um, I have some experience with Tombow ABT. Um, 
or uh, Tombow dual brush markers. The, um, you can check out my blog, natasoup.blogspot.com for information on that. And I think for demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and break into this Bristol pad. Now I'm pretty familiar with Bristol as a former SCAD kid with um, a master's degree in sequential art. I am very familiar with Strathmore's uh, sequential art boards. Oh. Let's see if I can actually get this out. I'm actually having trouble. And this is some of the thinnest Bristol. It's actually much more like cardstock, and it's a 135 pounds. This is a Strathmore visual journal with vellum Bristol, and I'm pretty sure this is just their like good quality because it's the yellow uh, seal, and it is 100 pounds, and it is um, actually a little bit thicker. I know it's hard for you to tell, but I can tell by feeling it. It's a little bit thicker than the Cache 101, which is supposedly a heavier weight. Now, um, the thickness doesn't necessarily have much to do with the weight. It, um, the weight also has to do with how tightly woven the fibers of the cellulose fibers are compressed. So um, this could be a denser paper than this. This is Strathmore's um, 500 series sequential art board. It's um, sequential art Bristol specifically with a plate surface. I love using markers on this because there's a little bit of a coating so it kind of sits on top but it can take a lot of layers. Um, and this is, I'm trying to find the weight on this. This is cotton though, whereas the cachet, mm-hmm. Not fine. Oh, it says paper made from responsible sources. That might be the best I get. And until this paper launches, I may not be able to find out what it's made out of. But this is 100% cotton, and um, these can be kind of expensive. I'm not finding the paper weight, though, unfortunately. Now, this is... Um, thicker, I want to say twice as thick, but it's not quite twice as thick, it's hard to tell, but um, this is the sort of paper I, I, I have used. These, this was the paper I used for my formative years, and even um, my, at my lowest, my cheapest, I was using um, the, 500, the 400 series um, Bristol for my projects when I was at an undergrad at UNL. So I've always used pretty decent Bristol paper, so, so I'm kind of persnickety about it. So um, the thing about 101 is this is meant to be cachet is De La Rowney's, like nice line and they tend to make portfolios, um, sketchbooks, things like that. Uh, whereas 101 it sort of implies like a basics approach so I'm interested to see how this performs. And um, for me, and for a lot of people who are letterists, I'm not a letterist, I'm a comic artist, but I do do lettering sometimes. I see a lot of letterists also using um, like alcohol markers for their lettering. So I'm going to grab some Copic markers. Um, I'm also going to grab some paint markers, I think. And since I have it handy, a Posterman and a Posca. And um, I know a lot of artists use watercolors as well. So I'm sort of scoping my desk for some quick and easy watercolors. I know a lot of letterers do use water brushes, although this one is not really the best water brush. Oh yeah, I have a cotton instead over here. Okay, so on this Bristol, we will be experimenting with alcohol markers, watercolors, Tombow um, dual brush tips, um, these paint markers, which are acrylic based, these water based markers. So we've got we've got a good spread of things to work with. But let's start with the pens that were included, the Tombow ABT. And we can talk about these a little bit too. 
So, um, as an illustrator, I actually don't use my Tombow ABTs very often. I do want to go back and do a new field test on them because um, I, I really just prefer um, the Kuratake Zig um, Art and Graphic Twin markers to these. I do, however, use the heck out of the blending brush. This thing is super useful. Let me grab some of my art and graphic twins. I almost always have some lying around. So this style of like dual tip water-based marker is pretty popular among calligraphers, among stampers, among crafters. Um, it's not necessarily that popular among artists because they can be frustrating to use, kind of finicky. You can't necessarily get a lot of layers. They take a while to dry. Um, which is just adds additional time to your illustration. They also take time to sort of plan around the limitations of these. Um, I'm not insulting them. I'm just saying you're more likely to see them used by crafters, by letterers, those sort of people who don't need to do a hundred layers of something. So, oh shoot. I got some of the art and graphic twin leaked onto my paper. So the first thing I'm going to do with these, these are the Tombow ABT or Tombow Dual Brush. They're called by both names. The barrel says ABT though, so that's what I usually go by. Um, I'm just going to kind of demonstrate both tips for you on each of the colors that were sent to me. And I was sent a six pack of the primaries which are colors that I don't actually have. I have a lot of skin tones and stuff, so that's that's good. They're bright, bold colors that would make for very cheerful sort of um, lettering projects. So they handle pretty well so far on this Bristol. Um, they uh, are not desaturated, which is something you'll sometimes get with markers on uncoated papers. That probably means this paper has a very tight weave, but that's just me guessing. It's very difficult for me to find information about this paper at this time online. Apologize for the shadow. Let me try moving my. That's a little bit better. All right, so that's the first test. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to do some blending, and I'm going to do that two ways. I'm going to do it marker to marker, um, and I'm also going to use the Tombow ABT. And see, one of the issues with this sort of paper is that it soaks up the ink immediately. So um, it is already, the ink's already dry when I'm putting um, the next color on. So it, there's like no play between the two colors. Unlike alcohol markers, you can't really scrub between the two, but we'll try. This is a colorless Tombow ABT from my own collection. And on this paper, we're actually getting some decent blending, which is nice to see. Um, it, with glycerin, um, base blenders like water blend water based blenders you um, they work differently from alcohol blenders and I've talked about this in the past alcohol blenders will push your color to the back of the paper glycerin will sort of pick up the inks and drag them for you so they the way um, you blend alcohol markers versus water based markers are entirely different and that's something important to keep in mind if you want to use either media understanding your materials makes them easier to use um, there are other ways you can blend Tombow ABT markers. There's also like tip to tip blending, which I don't really like because um, you can ruin your tip. So I tend not to do that. Oh, 
Oh, and see, it already picked up some green from the paper and dragged it in. Let me see if zooming in will make it apparent. So there was some minuscule green on the paper and my tip managed to pick it up. So I'm gonna try to scrub that out. Now what I have seen um, hand letterers do is go over after they've done their initial application. They they go over and sort of add accent colors or darken things. Anyway, these handle fairly well on this paper, um, and nothing soaks through, at least so far. Um, so, since we are also playing around with the Bristol, let's bring out the alcohol markers. And I use Bristol in general with alcohol markers a lot. It's sort of my paper of choice because I like working with a lot of layers and Bristol will absorb the ink rather than the ink sitting on top. And the alcohol will reactivate prior layers, which makes blending a lot easier. Even on um, card like this, you can get more subtle blends than you would necessarily be able to get with a water-based marker. With alcohol, it also evaporates almost immediately, so you can um, work over prior layers very quickly, in fact, immediately, whereas with water-based markers, um, it will start to tear up the surface of the paper the, um, because the water takes much longer to evaporate, sometimes like five minutes, as opposed to like almost instantaneous seconds. So unlike other artists who can, um, they have nicer uh, script than I do, nicer modern calligraphy than I do, um, I have to, in general, plan things out. I have to write them with, um, like, graphite and then ink it, and then I can go over it with color because um, graphite will ruin most of your markers. It'll destroy the tips on alcohol markers on water-based markers. So you really do want to use something like the microns that were sent in this set um, and then erase your graphite and allow this to cure for 24 hours before you go over it with ink for your best result. And you can see on this gra um, Bristol, the alcohol inks do indeed sink through. So let's move on to these. These are, um, like paint liners. The Derwent ones are line painters, I'm sorry. And they have um, acrylic in them. And I have not had good results with these because they tend to be bleedy and blobby. They seem to handle okay on this paper though. Those of you interested in this paper as a possible watercolor paper should keep in mind that 100 pounds is not really thick enough to prevent buckling um, without like s securing it to a board of some sort. And I'm also not really saturating the, um, the paper that much. I'm only really saturating the area that's directly under the layers. 
which is fine so far. I don't even think it's soaked through the paper. It does, however, have the tendency, and that is partially Cotman's fault, partially because there isn't a texture on this paper. As I apply a fresh layer of red on top of the still wet paint, it does try to scrape away the prior layers of paint that I've applied. And I've noticed that that's like a, just like a Cotman sort of thing. It happens a lot when I use Cotman inks. Now I'm not getting any sort of um, blending that I might want to have on my letters. Um, it pretty much stays where it's put, very similar to how gouache would do. All right, I'm back, and it only took like an hour to fix my swing arm. Um, in that time, everything had dried, so we can kind of take a look. Um, the paper hasn't warped. I'm gonna try doing another layer. Also in that time, I allowed the ink, the pigment to dry on my brush because I'm a bad artist. Okay, so I've pretty much put this paper through everything um, within reason that a letterer or a calligrapher, well not a calligrapher, a letterer flat out might put this paper through. And it seems to hold up pretty well. No significant buckling, no significant, um, uh, like, I guess buckling would be it, but also um, it doesn't just like soak through, no warping. So, so far, so good. I'm pretty pleased with this. So I'm gonna set this aside and now we can move, move on to the bleed proof trace paper from B Company. Um, and because it is a trace paper, it is light. It's 25 um, pounds, so it's thin and it's translucent. Oh, I almost grabbed two sheets. Oh, and already I had trouble because I can't remove it from the pad, so it tore at the top. It's... All right, all right from that angle. And um, on the handout, they recommended we use this over our Bristol. The problem with tracing paper is it's not really designed to take a lot of um, like liquids, for example. So. Um, I'm gonna get prepared and I'll be right back. So first stop is going to be with the Tombow ABTs since they were sent in the pack. And what's nice about um, papers like vellum, which tend to have a coating on them, is that the ink will sit on top which makes blending a whole lot easier. So we're gonna go from yellow to orange to red, hopefully, fingers crossed. Let's try it the reverse, from dark to light. That might work a little bit better. Yeah, it works a lot better. And I know it's difficult for you guys to see, so since this is dry, I'll slip the back underneath my tracing paper. Now, with the tracing paper, because um, we're using a water-based medium, although we're not getting pilling, we are definitely getting some buckling. Can you guys see that? It's like rippled where I apply the water.
and on this paper with the Tombow ABTs, you can't layer the color for depth of color, so you're gonna have to go to another color. Also, um, as the paper becomes slightly warped from the water added, it, um, it is a little more difficult to write on, although not super significantly. So let's move on to the alcohol markers. And I use alcohol markers on vellum fairly often because the alcohol will sit on top of the paper, same with the water. Um, it doesn't evaporate quite as fast. The problem with this though is um, sometimes with the alcohol marker, if you try to layer another color, a lighter, lighter color for example on top, see it'll, I mean it's an interesting effect, it's just something to be aware of. Let me get you guys in t on top of it. So you see where um, the lighter green has pushed the darker green away and it has this sort of um, outline around it? That's what happens when you use tracing paper sometimes with your alcohol markers. Let's find out if we get that with the water-based markers. So we've got some blue and I'm gonna put down green. No, so with the water-based markers, it layers on top rather than pushing aside. Now on this tracing paper, it should also be super easy to blend your color out with the ABT Colorless Blender. So you can get a much subtler gradation on the, oh, sorry, I have to do that again for you, I guess. A much subtler gradation than you would have been able to get on a paper that would absorb the ink immediately. Now, unfortunately, thin papers like this are really not meant to be used with, say, acrylic liners like these. And um, I'll just show you by filling in a section. And they'll also take a really long time to dry because instead of being absorbed into the paper, your ink is sitting on top of the paper surface. And it causes a lot of wrinkling. So as pretty as that is, you do get um, paper damage. And you can tell as it's drying how it already has that kind of puckered look to it. And it's particularly bad with the um, paint liner from Recollections, which is acrylic ink. And grab the Posca. Before I'd use this, this the metallic blue is the Zig Poster Mint, which is also a water-based. So um, this is this is acrylic and water. This is question mark, question mark, and water. This is also question mark, question mark, and water. Um, and you're getting, I'm getting a lot of rippling on the tracing paper with the Zig Poster Mint. So I bet you guys can tell how adding watercolor is gonna go. You can see it's already buckling because the paper can't absorb the water very well. It's too thin and there's just nowhere for it to go. So, um, however, where the tracing paper better shines is with the technical pins that were also included in the lettering kit. And I'm gonna grab one of the bigger tipped ones. Um, I think it's an eight, no, yeah, it's an eight. 
And it gets even bigger than this. They have um, uh, bullet nib one and um, calligraphy nib uh, two millimeter as well. So the pigment ink actually goes down nice and flat. But let's see how filling in a large section would go. And if you're doing hand lettering, um, there's a high chance that you're going to be filling in block letters. And I actually would not recommend filling them in with the pigments because that would take forever. I would recommend filling them in with a black brush pen, which didn't come with the set, which is a little disappointing to see because there's so many fine ones on the market. Um, and if you're interested in finding a black brush pen that works for you, I highly recommend you read my Fude pen reviews, F-U-D-E, Fude, pen reviews on my blog, natasoup.blogspot.com. I also have some videos where I introduce them as inking tools. So we've applied a lot of ink, a lot of wetness to the paper surface in the form of a block letter A, and um, it doesn't buckle or pill as much. It does buckle a bit, but it doesn't buckle as much as the Zig Posterman or the acrylic over here. Um, surprisingly, the Posca didn't really buckle at all. The watercolors buckled. Um, and the Zig, or not the Zig, the Tombow ABT dried mostly flat. So if you can be patient with this, your paper will resume normalcy to an extent. So um, let's do one more test with this. I'm gonna do watercolor, mostly because I'm, I have a little bit of a mean streak. I wanna show you guys how bad this is gonna buckle with watercolor. And it looks so pretty on the surface because there's that like hint of translucency. And if you're looking for that, I highly recommend you use translucent Yupo because Yupo um, is a plastic paper. So it's not going to buckle or pill or shear no matter how much water you put on it. So see, it really, really got bad. Although that's an interesting effect. That's an interesting look. Now, compared to other tracing papers, this tracing paper is pretty nice. I use, personally, I use Blix tracing, Dick Blix own store brand tracing paper, mostly because they don't really use a lot of tracing paper. And for the most part, I only use it when I'm doing like character turnarounds. Um, and that doesn't, I don't need it to be archival, although Blick tracing paper is not really archival and it will yellow. Um, I do not know, I do not yet know whether or not B tracing paper is archival or if it will yellow or what. But, um, so that is how some of the most common mediums for um, hand lettering or modern calligraphy, that's how they handle on this, on both papers. And I realized that I actually didn't talk about the lead holder they gave us or the lead, the eraser or the pointer. Let me see if I can dig up my other Koenora lead holder. See, years ago, before I was introduced to non-photo blue lead, um, I was introduced to Sanford's um, non-photo blue, like uh, these sort of leads, the big leads. And um, those are called turquoise, and I might not actually have any because I haven't used it in years, and I tend to give away stuff that I don't use anymore. So it looks like I don't have either of them around, which is kind of a shame. Because I really could have sworn I had at least a folder in here. Nope. All right. But these work very simply. They have a clutch mechanism. You can see when I extend it. Let me remove that lead. The clutch mechanism basically holds the lead in place through um, friction, it grips into the lead. Um, these leads can be a little bit prone to breaking as, as any unprotected lead would be. Now, if you're heavy handed like I am, these are, um, these are good to use because uh, they're less likely to snap in your hand, although the line weight is big, but you can also um, apply broad fields of graphite to your paper if you so wish.
So I'm quickly jotting in some block letters that I'm then going to ink for you guys and I'll allow it to dry for an hour before I come back and test out the BM2 eraser by Factus. So that's some basic block letters and now I'm going to use that 8 that I just got And I guess I could have even done this on the tracing paper, but I want to test out the eraser and how well this erases out from under the ink. Now we have another thing to explore here. And I'm still trying to figure out how to get the, um, the top off. Aha, there we go. Or uh, maybe? Because eventually you're going to want to empty the shavings, right? Anyway, this is a lead pointer. And um, it has two... Huh. Oh, I see. Okay. I guess that's the test for length. You spin it and it sharpens like this I think I really want to see the inside of this thing now I've always had like little hand pointers for my leads oh okay all right I see Guess how sharp as that it's gonna get. And to get the excess dust off, you stick it into that soft foam insert, and that'll knock the extra dust off. And this came with two refills of the little soft foam. But what I usually use, let's see if I have one of those hanging around. Probably not if I rehomed my drafting pencil. Is I used to have a small hand lead pointer for drafting pencils. And I mean for um, lead holders, sorry. But I can't find it because I think I rehomed it. And that was cool. And those are pretty commonly available. These are pretty uh, commonly available. I've seen them at Michael's, I've seen them at my local plaza. I mean, it's going to be in like the drafting and architecture section. They're not hard to find. Honestly, these are pretty common too. So, um, the last thing we need to look at before I give this an hour drive time are the Duet LEDs. And it's called Duet because you only get two. And it seems like they spent a lot of money on this holder designed to protect them, which opens like this. And you can just slide your LED out. But again, you only get two. It seems a bit um, excessive. For how much do they say it costs? Let's see if I can find my pack. Or, nope. All right. Well, I think it was like four seventy-five for this. It seems a bit excessive, the packaging and the price, considering you only get two leads. So um, I'm gonna see you guys in about an hour, which is the minimal dry time for inks recommended, where I put the Factus BM2 um, knock type eraser to the test, erasing the text that came that I rendered for you guys. Hey guys, it's been more than an hour, so it's time for me to try and erase the graphite underneath. Oh, I gotta extend the... So, for a knock eraser, or a vinyl eraser, it's a very hard eraser, and it takes some scrubbing to get the graphite out from underneath. And there's still some ghosting, I don't know 
if I can possibly get it close enough for you guys. There's still some ghosting there along the A and the B. Um, personally, I prefer um, Pintel's Click Erase erasers. They're affordable, they're cheap, they're sold pretty much, I mean, they are accessible, they're affordable, they're sold pretty much everywhere. You can buy the refills for them. You can re build, buy the refills for these. These used to be, I gotta pull out for that. Those used to be, these erasers used to be marketed as tough stuff. And let me see if I have one. Hmm. Nope, I guess that was another something I liquidated. Anyway, they used to be marketed as tough stuff erasers. Um, and they're certainly not unique in their class. There are lots of erasers that are like this on the market. So if you say, think this sort of fine point eraser is for you, um, you can definitely give the Fact is BM2 a try, but there's lots others out there if you don't like it. So, one more demonstration before I call it a night. Do some sketching of some letters. And for this sort of application, this is when a fine, a smaller um, brush nib in black would be great. So you can see it through the tracing paper, and I'm going to tape it down because my tracing paper got warped. So you don't want to use water-based markers like this or alcohol markers right over um, graphite. You can use them on tracing paper over graphite like this. So you can do your sketch in graphite and then go over your sketch with your water-based markers preserving the nibs. So that's my demonstration and overview of Art Snacks lettering box. It debuted March 2016. Um, it was about $80 and it has, according to the Art Snacks site, a retail value of $110, although I found that closer to $85. Um, it came with a six pack of Tombow dual brush markers. It came with a pad of tracing paper, a pad of vellum. It came with a BM2 eraser from Factus. It came with a lead holder. Oh, that just broke. And um, two replacement leads as well as a lead pointer. And it also came with two months of Skillshare, which I look forward to sharing my experiences with you guys. Um, due to the nature of Skillshare, it would be cheating the artists who created the, the classes that I'm going to take. It would be cheating to share the material um, as it is presented. I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is going to share the results of my lessons with you guys. So you can look forward to seeing that in April when I have a little bit more time to dedicate it, dedicate to it. I'm Becca Hilburn. Um, I hope you guys had a great day. If you enjoyed this video, if you found this video useful or helpful, please remember to like and consider subscribing to my channel for even more content like this. I'm still waiting on my Sketchbox Studio Box to arrive for March. I might be emailing them shortly uh, because it's overdue. Um, 
But every month I unbox art box, I mean art snacks and sketch box on camera for you guys to help you decide whether or not either subscription service is the right one for you. Um, I go over the supplies within, I talk about price, and then on the blog I write it all up, include links to everything, and um, basically put a bow on it. So if that's your sort of thing, if you enjoy these kind of things, please make sure you check out my blog, natosoup.blogspot as well. If you would like to help fund more content like this, because it does get expensive, um, please check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash natosoup. I have all sorts of goodies in mind for backers. So I hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.